Yep, that's right, Chispa. I almost somehow got kicked out of Discord today. Poor me and no looking. Oh! Hello, folks! I'm the one, the only, Hobo Tom, and I'm here to talk about SmackDown. I just want to get this done quickly. I'm kind of tired. I still have to go for my nightly hoboing. Collect my aluminum so that way tomorrow I don't have anything else to do. I'm not going to actually relax after work. I think tomorrow's a, is that a long day. Oh, shoot, it is a long day. I wonder what happened to that, that new girl that supposedly was going to be there this week. She wasn't on the schedule. That's never a good thing. Seriously, I did that. That. I did that. I'm making this. Doing that. I actually did a lot of stuff today. So I'm here to talk about some SmackDown wrestling. Of course, as always, I like to give some shout-outs before. Hurt Calkins. Yep. You and I have the same thoughts. You sort of earned this six count. And Master Carver, I think you only get one or two more before you get sent over to the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. But you, sir, are definitely a master of the air guitar.
And because I was happy today, if I seem a little bit sluggish, I had a little bit of a bubble. I had to celebrate somehow to just rehydrate myself and give myself that little extra pep. Ah, uh, because I passed all my, I passed my freaking program for work. So I don't think I'm getting a pay grade, but I'm getting transferred from pre-service to training unit. Wait, I'm still in training though. I just realized that. Oh well. At least they can't just outrightly fire me yet. Unless I really screw something up. So seriously, let's talk about some SmackDown. This was an interesting show. I think I liked it more than I did Raw. The segments were good. They had meaning, with the exception of like the random Big E showing up. And overall, it's hard to complain about it. So let's get to it. First, it starts off with a recap of the Swamp Fight. And, yep, uh, it kind of ended a little bit because it was just a recap. And with, of course, the, the, the Alexa Bliss as, ooh, I did that, Sister Abigail. And then, and then starts the Firefly Funhouse. So, yeah, man. I have to be very careful when I do that. Some real weirdos around here nowadays. Got to be careful. But yeah, uh, Bray Wyatt is a crooked picture of Braun Strowman. He almost makes the insinuation that Braun should trade the belt, the Universal Championship belt. I'm fine with. Yeah. For Alexa Bliss's soul. Alexa Bliss's soul is definitely worth that Universal Championship. And then we start with our first match. It was Matt Riddell. Bro. Taking on Sheamus. Bro. The Battle of the Bros? Indeed. Ooh, that's a good one line. Battle of the Bros. Battle of the Bros. And I have something else to say about the show, but I'll get to that. Oh, yeah, besides the fact that I was get, got kicked out of Discord for posting naughty videos. But um, I was almost deleted! The fear delete! Um, but enough about that. Matt Riddle versus Sheamus was actually pretty good. Uh, classic wrestling match. Start off with Sheamus. He had a vicious headlock takedown. Matt Riddell so technical with that single leg takedown, uh, single leg back heel trip combo. It's always oh, tell you what, whenever I see good old fashioned collegiate style wrestling or freestyle wrestling, it's always gonna it's always gonna be a good match, no matter what happens at the end. Um, let's see here then. Riddell went for the Fuji armbar, went to work the fingers. Transfer that over to an Americano or key lock. Then the uh, the half Nelson for the pin. Again, very technical, very catch wrestling. Also a little collegiate wrestling in there. Still good stuff. Uh, Sheamus, however, did hit the power bomb on him. The, the the ten beats where he drapes the guy over and just slaps him in the chest with his fist. Again, Sheamus again the heavy striker. Both of, both of them were pretty heavy striker, but they toss in some wrestling moves every so often. Um, there was the the bro ki- the bro kick by Matt Riddell. Um, eventually got got the two count. Uh, Sheamus hit the white noise. I'll tell you what, Sheamus says. I don't know who's better at backbreaker, Sheamus or. Roderick Strong. It's a shame he has some good-looking, nasty backbreakers himself. Uh, then, then the match got interrupted by Shory G. He was going after the bounty on Matt Riddle's head. So Matt Riddle won by disqualification. Thankfully, Shorty G. 
got beat up by Matt Riddell. And then Sheamus beat up Shorty G. Sheamus is now face. Hey, when, when you side against Baron Corbin, no matter what you normally are, you sir are the face. <sighs> this was a good match until that... Look, I think it's way my yawning already. But this, folks, because we had a death to finish, baby. This was a dusty old cheese burger. And Sherry Schreiber's backstage. Um, she talks to Baron Corbin. Uh, Seamus says, dude, why'd you have, have your punk guy interfere with my match and cost me a victory? Give him the finger wag of doom. Left. Then we had a, the jerk sheet. This was amazing. Oh, and I hate to say it. I think after... I don't know. Do I really want to just outrightly boo Sonya Deville? She cut a good promo on the show. First, the dirt she started off was a recap. With, with Mandy Rose's hair. Mandy Rose's hair is on a stick. It looked like Moppy with blonde hair. That was that was actually kind of funny. Because had the big googly eyes and everything. But utterly ridiculous. That was good. Then Sonya Deville comes out. I'll tell you what. Sonya Deville. Her promos have gotten good. I haven't seen her wrestle in a while. Her wrestling, I know, has improved. I don't know if I can just outrightly boo her anymore. Because normally I'm always boo Sonya Deville, but now I'm like, I don't know. Should I just outrightly boo Sonya Deville? Very hard to tell. Uh, Morrison, uh, Ms. Morrison just kind of rant on about Mandy Rose. That brings out heavy machinery, so later we'll, the, those four men will have a match. And then we have Cesaro versus Lindsay Dorado. This was a good match. Short match, but good. Cesaro is just so strong. I think even most WWE people say is that pound for pound, Cesaro is one of the strongest individuals in the WWE. Uh, Lindsay Dorado, he's so fast. He does so much unique stuff. Almost, if this match would have gone longer, this would have been like a old school Chikara match. It did have that little taste of CMLL though, which I think was actually bought up by AAA. I know they were in talks. AAA and CML were in talks about AAA buying out CML, which I haven't heard anything else about. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, Cesaro is just so strong. Um, again, he's more brutish. Which is good the way it should be. Uh, Lindsay hit that springboard cutter. He only got a two count. Then he was going for the the uh, perfect moonsault. He did the, the one off the bottom rope. One off the second rope. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura distracted him for the third one. That was enough for him to be caught in like a razor's edge by Cesaro. Uh, he countered that. But got stuck in a gotch neutralizer. They're good. I can't say anything bad about this match. Besides the fact that it was short. Ugh. I understand why it was short. Because Firefly Funnels was actually really good. But I'll tell you what. This is still no long finish. It's a good cheeseburger match. Then in the back, we have Heavy Machinery trying to be interviewed by Kayla. Maybe Otis is the one destroying stuff. He did knock over that one case. And Firefly Funhouse! The Fiend comes out along with like a tied up Alexa Bliss in a dress. Oh my. Um, and then Braun Strowman made, made his little promo on the Titantron. That's good. So that's a pretty good setup. That'll be a good setup for SummerSlam and to see whatever they want to do in the future. Need a little liquid refreshment there. Then we have Jeff Hardy versus 
Baron Corbin. Um, yeah, start off, uh, Matt Hardy hits the inverted atomic drop. Old school wrestling moves. I love the. I love me a good, good old fashioned atomic drop. Um, a basement drop kick and a standing splash onto Baron Corbin and went for the pin. Jeff, however, when he goes outside, he, he gets beat up on the table. He starts to eat right hands while laying back against the table. Oh, oh, from Baron Corbin. Uh, uh, Corbin, when they got back in the ring, hit the deep six. It was a kick out. Big something. Then Sheamus shows up. And he bro kicks Jeff Hardy. Therefore, in the twist, Jeff Hardy wins by disqualification. Yes. Um, and someone was cursing too. I always like it when the sound goes off. Because that means someone was saying... Whereas they shouldn't, just like I was posting things, I probably shouldn't have. She got me a delete! At least it didn't get me kicked out or bleeped out, which is good. Uh, let's see here. Um, and then Corbin. Oh, yeah, then there was the next match. It was Corbin versus Sheamus. So that was really weird. Because Jeff Hardy won by disqualification. Yeah. That was a ham sandwich. It was Sheamus versus Baron Corbin. Very simple. It was a very heavy striking match. Um, kicks, punches, European uppercuts by Sheamus would always be countered by that weird neck stretch Baron Corbin does on Sheamus. Which is not necessarily good because Sheamus does have a bad neck. Uh, Corbin eventually posts Sheamus, and Sheamus is posted for a second time this night. And then, bro, shows up. Um, he distracted Baron Corbin. Sheamus bro kicked Baron Corbin, and he got the pinfall. It's an interesting setup. Not one I'm a fan of. Way too much, way too much interference in this entire show. And I think we're about two weeks out from SummerSlam. So we'll see we'll see how things line up. But this match again, nothing special. Kind of a ham sandwich match. Then we have Kayla interviewing Big E because New Day Rocks. New Day Rocks. And but he didn't have a match though, which was weird. Uh, and Sasha and Bailey were backstage. He gets called out. They're gonna have a Zoom conference with Stephanie McMahon on the Titan Tron. That should be interesting. And that actually kind of was. Stephanie said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you two are gonna have both. Both of you will have opponents for a SummerSlam. Ah, uh, so probably beating Sasha Banks, or uh, Asuka's is probably beating Bailey." Well, she'll go after Sasha Banks then. Bailey will have, I think next week they're going to have some woman's elimination match. See who faces Bailey. And then the next week, all the ridiculous contract signing garbage like they always do. Yeah, it is what it is. Then there's Kayla with The Miz and Morrison. And The Miz and Morrison are next because it's Miz and Morrison. I'll tell you what, I still do like the slow mo effects from John Morrison. He still makes it look good. And heavy machinery comes out. You know this was gonna happen. Um, Morrison again starts up striking like he always does. His fast feet. Again, something he learned from Lucha Underground. Eventually he does get double teamed by heavy machinery. Uh, the Miz Miz gets in and for the most part he just annoys. Otis because he would kick him in the gut. And Otis would shake his belly. Uh, he would give strikes. Otis would just yeah, yeah. Uh, you kick him in the gut again. Then he does his pelvic thrust. The Miz, the Miz looks like when he sees that, it looks like he's on just the verge of laughter. I don't know how he keeps it in. 
Ms. You are a true professional. Let's see here. Yeah, because then Ms. Eats a headbutt and then big splash. Go to commercial. Tucker and t does a flying somersault. Tope suicido. Everyone else says it. I might as well say it. Takes out both Ms. And Morrison on the outside. Ms. And Morrison the, eventually they do double team Tucker. Uh, John Morrison gets in his cheap shots as he always does. But Otis gets a hot tag. Otis again, <laughs> again gets John Morrison. <laughs> Splashes him. Caterpillars him. I feel so bad. They've, besides their very brief title run. Unless, hey, unless John Morrison said, hey. You give me a pile of money, I do whatever you say. He's always really been a team player wherever he's been. So but he's, he might say, hey, I'll, I'll be a goof. You can pay me millions of dollars to be a goof. You'd pay me a couple hundred bucks. I'd be a goof too. Then let's see here. So, but then Mandy gets involved. She goes after Sonya Deville. This causes, they get in the ring, and for some reason, I guess it's a new rule, but if two people get in the ring and start fighting that aren't part of the match, it's going to be a disqualification. I honestly forget. They've, they've done weird things throughout their whole history, so who knows? This match was good. 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 And you know what? This mess, nobody won. That's the truth form of a death that finished, baby. This match was also a good cheeseburger match. And this is where it got weird. Because then it's backstage, and I can understand Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose still going at each other backstage. And then this, like, new group of hoodlums who look like they're from NXT. Because they're definitely not the Forgotten Sons. The one who is female has a rather impressive chest on her. Shotzi Blackheart. But they come in. Swinging like baseball bats, lead pipes. They start chasing people out. They they mug. I think they mug the Rock's daughter. Not necessarily the thing you want to do. Um, yeah, because there was a cat. Yeah, because before there was a cat fight between Mandy Rose. Yeah, whatever that was. Let's go off. These people show up. They start mugging people with baseball bats. Um, crowbar, real crowbars, tire, uh, not tire irons, but really big, thick steel bars. Um, they. <laughs> For the most part, they just like look like hoodlums because they just like beat up professional wrestlers, except for the professional little wrestler that that held the chair. Good for you, sir. And then they spray painted the plexiglass and turned over the table, and someone had a chainsaw. Like, whoa, chainsaws! It's getting pretty. Extreme, like CZW extreme, because he cut the ring ropes, which of course are actual ropes, as we found out. And they just sit there, like spray paint stuff, but they don't really tag anything. They just put like the anti WWE symbol and like just like black wavy lines and like lines through stuff. Very nondescript vandalism. I just want to know where the cops are at because obviously Full Sail University is the least safe place. The Performance Center is also a fairly unsafe working environment as well. And that was SmackDown. The good thing about SmackDown, it went quick. They had good wrestling matches. The endings were suspect, but it worked. I'll say it was a good cheeseburger SmackDown. We'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And.